Exodus 39. We are so close to finishing the long, dull descriptions of every detail of God's favorite things. But now, we have to get through the clothes. From the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, they made woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary. They also made sacred garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. I'm going to save you some brain power here and just say we're about to learn that they made clothes in accordance with Exodus 28. Like, exactly so. Everything is how God said he wanted it. But instead of just saying that, we're going to hear the whole story again. Isn't the Bible fun? <laughs> no. No, it's not. They made the ephod of gold and of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and of finely twisted linen. They hammered out thin sheets of gold and cut strands to be worked into the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, the work of skilled hands. They made shoulder pieces for the ephod, which were attached to two of its corners so it could be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband was like it, of one piece with the ephod and made with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and with finely twisted linen, as the Lord commanded Moses. Thrilling. Interestingly enough, that bit about hammering sheets of gold to work into the mix, that was not in God's original instructions. They just did that themselves, because they know what their master likes and how to suck up to him. They mounted the onyx stones in gold filigree settings and engraved them like a seal with the names of the sons of Israel. Then they fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. I swear, if I weren't anal retentive, I would have ended this series chapters ago. I cannot believe you are still watching this. What I'm saying is that I'm worried about you. Not you in a general sense, I, I mean you. Specifically you. You know who you are. They fashioned the breastpiece, the work of a skilled craftsman. They made it like the ephod of gold, and of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. It was square, a span long and a span wide, and folded double. Then they mounted four rows of precious stones on it. The first row was carnelian, chrysolite, and beryl. The second row was turquoise, lapis lazuli, and emerald. The third row was jacinth, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row was topaz, onyx, and jasper. They were mounted in gold filigree settings. There were twelve stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the twelve tribes. I know. Dear God, we all know. For the breastpiece, they made braided chains of pure gold like a rope. They made two gold filigree settings and two gold rings and fastened the rings to two of the corners of the breastpiece. They fastened the two gold chains to the rings at the corners of the breastpiece and the other ends of the chains to the two settings, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. They made two gold rings and attached them to the other two corners of the breastpiece on the inside edge next to the ephod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the bottom of the shoulder pieces on the front of the ephod, close to the seam just above the waistband of the ephod. They tied the rings of the breastpiece to the rings of the ephod with blue cord, connecting it to the waistband so that the breastpiece would not swing out from the ephod, as the Lord commanded Moses. So I figured out why there's so much genocide in the Bible. Because people would rather die than hear about God's fashion parade again. Honestly, would you rather hear more of this or just go out in a giant flood? You wouldn't even put up a fight at this point. They made the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth, the work of a weaver, with an opening in the center of the robe like the opening of a collar, and a band around this opening so that it would not tear. They made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen around the hem of the rope. And they made bells of pure gold and attached them around the hem between the pomegranates. The bells and pomegranates alternated around the hem of the robe to be worn for ministering, 
as the Lord commanded Moses. For Aaron and his sons, they made tunics of fine linen, the work of a weaver, and the turban of fine linen, the linen caps, and the undergarments of finely twisted linen. The sash was made of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, the work of an embroiderer, as the Lord commanded Moses. I can't believe these people found weavers and embroiderers so easily. I once needed to fix my air conditioner, and it took forever to get someone to my place. Moses doesn't just need tailors, he needs very specific artisans. And they're all just there. He gets them immediately. That's not even fair. Quick trivia. Do you remember why they needed bells and pomegranates around the hem of the robe? It's so God could hear Aaron when he entered the holy place and not kill them. Exodus 28 literally said the bells were there to make sure God didn't accidentally murder anyone. That's disturbing, but I guess I'm glad they didn't forget that bit. They made the plate, the sacred emblem, out of pure gold and engraved on it like an inscription on a seal, holy to the Lord. Then they fastened a blue cord to it to attach it to the turban, as the Lord commanded Moses. That's it. That's the full rehash of 11 chapters ago. We're done. They made everything. There is nothing left to describe. Finally, we can move on. So all the work on the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was completed. The Israelites did everything, just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of another durable leather and the shielding curtain, the Ark of the Covenant Law with its poles and the atonement cover, the table with all its articles and the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstand with its row of lamps and all its accessories, and the olive oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard the ropes and tent pegs for the courtyard, all the furnishings for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when serving as priests. We just spent a giant passage learning about how, after they built everything, they did some interior decorating and moved everything to Moses. Was that necessary? feel like that was already implied. Whoever wrote this just wanted another chance to show off the furniture. What if Moses is like, I don't like it. Start over and make some changes. We would seriously need a third testament. The Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. There is a lot going on in the phrase, Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. How could he possibly have checked off every single detail? NASA has a less detailed checklist before a space shuttle mission. There's no way Moses confirmed everything. You know he just looked at all the stuff and said, yeah, sure, <laughs> why not? And then he just moved on. If the Bible's writers had done that too, we could have saved ourselves so much time. Robert Alter, a famous Bible translator, says of this passage that it's like, quote, the last movement of a classical symphony, pulling all the previously stated elements together as the piece moves towards satisfying closure. Which is just proof that people who take the Bible this seriously need to find better hobbies. I do have some good news for you. We're done with the descriptions, and we're gonna get back to the plot. Maybe. I mean, I assume. I, I don't know what the plot is anymore. I, I totally forgot. I'm sure someone's getting murdered soon, though. But, but whatever, the next chapter is the final one in Exodus.